If you lie on fire, you can do damage to the devil's kingdom. And the devil knows that. Huh? And he's coming to take that every day out of you. But that's your job to keep that fire burning to do what God's called you to do. In 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter says, Therefore, since through God's mercy, thank you, Lord, for that mercy, we have the ministry, we do not lose heart. Amen. We don't lose heart. That heart might get so heavy, it feels like it's going to be in our feet. But we don't lose heart. Why do we not lose heart? Because we know his mercy and his love is sufficient. It will carry us through. Amen. We don't lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secrets and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, and I'm going to stop saying that. that I'm going to bring this up because so many preachers, y'all may not like this message this morning, but you need it. We all need it. When we do shameful and secret things, we think it's secret. And or try to be deceptive to people. I don't care if it's your day-to-day -day life. When you tell somebody and you give them your word that you're going to do something, and you don't do it. You're a liar. Yeah. It ain't no little white lies. You are a flat out a straight liar. And this Bible tells me there'll be no liars there. Oh, I told that to keep down a fuss. I, I didn't want to face that. You're a liar. You're lying. Because as soon as you lie one lie, you're going to have to come, keep doing that. And that's the sin. Just face it. Nobody likes conviction. Face it and tell the truth. Tell the truth. Just face it and tell the truth. God said there'll be no liars there. Now, God's a lot more merciful than Pastor G. Because if you lie to me and I catch you, I don't trust you. And if I if I ever trust you again, I'm going to watch and be scared of you. Oh, yeah. But I'm on, it takes me a long time to pray that through. And get my heart and my mind fixed to trust you again. Because I feel like if you lie to me like that, sit and lie to my face, you'll do it again and again. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got businessmen that lie. We have, Brother Mark. we got people that won't do what they say. And take people's money. And it don't bother them. It don't even faze them. we got people on jobs saying, I'm going to do you a day's work. I'm going to do this job. The very my best, great, that's wonderful. But when you, you go and earn your mum and your grandma and you have to do it and you slop through it, you are being deceived, deceptive, and God is not pleased with that. It's everyday life things in your vessel, in your being, your joy. That treasures and the treasures is the things that God has delighted you to, the things God showed you to do that you didn't do. And we're going to be judged for that, people, just like we're going to be judged for what we do do. Amen. Oh, you think you ain't going to be judged for because you pushed that off and said, let somebody else do it? You will be judged Amen. for the things you didn't do. Yeah. Well, Amen. people say, I can't win. Oh, yes, you can. When your heart is lined up with God, you won't want to be deceptive. You you will keep lies from your mouth. If it makes somebody fight mad with you, you will tell them that is not right. And you lied, that's a lie. Somebody said, well, Pastor, do you do that? Yeah, just did it to some of my family members at the fall festival. I'm going to move on and not say what that was, but right to their face. Because why did you I do that? Not trying to be me, but you cannot let people keep on believing that they're right and tell lies. You got to you got to confront that. Amen. Amen. Got to confront it. He said, "On the contrary, we don't distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience. See, you got to make that conscious think." Every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, 
It is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. You know why people can't seem to get some things down in them? Because they really are unbelievers, even though they're Christians. They don't believe the things that God has said in his word. This word is, it says, the word killeth, but the spirit maketh alive that word of God. And if we act upon the word of God, and when I say act on it, put it, to work in us every day of our life, every second, living this Word of God, then it's made alive. And we're able to do for the Lord things that we couldn't ordinarily do. It'll change the way you even think. And it'll sure change how you live. And your mind won't be blinded and you won't be so full of unbelief, you will believe so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of God. Their minds is blinded to it. Who is the image of God? For we do not preach ourselves, amen, but Jesus Christ our Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness. If we're so dark inside us, if we don't have those treasures God and let me tell you those treasures God has put in you is his knowledge his wisdom if you study this word we are born we have a brain we have natural wisdom we have natural knowledge but it don't even compare to the knowledge and the wisdom of our Lord and when we serve him and walk in him we can call on that every day about every situation every situation now Lord is this the best way to go with this? And I, and Lord, I'm going to believe if you shut this or that or this best way, but I'm going to believe you anyway because I'm asking you to, to go lead me the best way in this situation. And I'm, I choose to trust him. So I tell him, I trust you, Lord. Amen. And the way you guide me, I'm going to go. But you know, you got to be willing for that, not just say it. you got to be willing for God to guide you. And let me tell you, Sometimes when God's guiding, you really let him. He's guiding all the time. You know, it'll be the harder way. It'll be the harder way, but it'll come out the better way. Always. Amen. He said, let light shine out of darkness. If we let the gospel light that God has put in us and the treasures and the wonderful things, that spirit is a treasure. The spirit of God is a treasure. It's a gift he gave it to us freely to help us, but it's a treasure. Oh, I was just shaking my shoes to think if I didn't have the Spirit of God, if he hadn't loved me enough to shed that abroad in my heart and my life. I didn't deserve it. You didn't deserve it. But if you got it, you ought to treasure it and be so thankful and use it every day. Use that Spirit of God every day. Amen. Amen. Because somebody else ain't going to show you all the time. God ain't going to use nobody to show you all the time where to put your feet. You're going to have to ask God. You're going to have to get to God and say, God, show me where to put my feet. Lead me. And when you just, you can't just say that. You've got to live in him. You become so in him that, you know, you fade away, fade away, fade away. Like that song, one of the songs that they sung yesterday, I give myself away. Well, you got to give yourself away all over to God. All over to God. And as you give yourself away, he becomes through that light shining guard of destiny. Amen. Because really, let's face it, honey, we are limited, but our Lord is not limited in what we can do. He says, let the light shine out of darkness. Make his life shine in our hearts. Amen. To give us the light of the knowledge. Hello. There's that word. Knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. When God gives us knowledge and we will follow it and wisdom, there will be a great, great, great glory of God to be expanded in your life. Other people may not, God might not even want you to run tell others, but you will know in that inner being, Ooh, I know the Lord answered my prayer. And on this, thank you for, Lord God in me, thank you for that knowledge that I did not see. Amen. Amen. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, 
which we know clay. Amen. To show that our, that this all surpassing power mm -hmm. is from God. Mm -hmm. That power is from God and not from us. Mm -mm. Now, I think that we as a body of Christ, we are not the only church. Other churches going through it. It's all over the world. It's got worse. But I want to remind you that it has as much as evil it's got in it. It's horrible. The evil's got worse. Mm, the filth's got worse. Mm. And some of the things that the, our children mid-age and even younger is coming up in yeah. is horrible. But, oh, thank you, Jesus, that the love of God yeah. that surpasses, woo! I feel him this morning. The love of God that surpasses all understanding is still in the earth and he is still performing miracles and he is still moving mightily. And you know why? People say, well, if he is, why is the evil there? Because he said that in the latter days, and we ain't going to get in them, honey, we in them. The devil will go rapid, even stronger than they ever have. And he'll work harder to take those that belongs to God back into captivity where he can take them to hell with him. But that when the Christian sees these signs, we will cry out before he comes. We're going to do some crying out, people, before he comes. Come, Lord Jesus. It's going to get that bad. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, and get us. But we have treasures. And these old clay bodies, that, that power that's of, from God that surpasses. Mm. Oh, Surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side. Can you say amen? amen. Has it been coming at from ever which way? Has it been like it's no let up? Some to a greater degree than others. Yeah, I can say that because I know the situations. So, but you felt you like you're to the greatest degree. I can tell that way all my sheep wants to talk to me at different times. Man, theirs is the greatest. God, they got to tell it. You got to pray. There's somebody else that's got something going on that's even worse than your situation. So, you know, draw comfort that you ain't the only one going through it. The Bible says draw, God, draw from your forefathers what they went through. We love that what all Peter and Paul and all them did, miracles, but we don't want to study how they got there and how they suffered and what they went through to have that kind of anointing. Oh, it won't fall. You can't pray it enough. Well, you better pray a lot, but that won't bring that anointing like that. Suffering brings the anointing. Being dying to self. And when you suffer, some of that flesh will go. Yes. If it's suffering in the body or hell in the mind, it, that flesh will go and the spirit will be stronger. And you run around and say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. You a Christian with no fuel. You like a firecracker that don't have or a, a, a big cherry bum. That's the biggest one I ever knew about with no fuse to light it. You got you ain't got a fire, a consuming fire. Jesus said, I'm a consuming fire. You got some coals in you. That's what you got. But when you get on fire for God, you can say, though I'll be hard pressed on never side, but not crushed. Woo! Perplexed, but not in despair. Because I know he'll bring me out. Persecuted. Everybody knows that one. Persecuted, but not abandoned. It will even feel like that God is doing the persecuting. You'll feel abandoned, but he is level with you all the time. All the time. Mm -mm -mm. Struck down. And we get knocked down and we got to get up again, get up again, get up again, but not destroyed. Amen. We always carry around in our bodies the death of Christ Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our bodies. Amen. Amen. 
So study what you, the Lord Jesus went through and what he did, and you will learn some things. Really study. You know, I dare say I will say this. I believe that some follow Jesus here on this earth, like a flip of light there. Well, let's see what next, the next thing he's going to do. Maybe we can get some of that, just like they got some of the fish in the bread that he multiplied. They weren't following him because he did that great miracle. Huh? You see that? They, they, they eat all they wanted that fish and bread and didn't cost them a dime. And man, let's see what next he's going to do. That's like some of you, and I'm going to get down hard on your toes with this next one. You come to church. You don't spend no time before God. You don't pray. You don't pray through. You come in here heavy. You come in here, mm, wonder what Pastor Gene or Pastor Adam's going to preach for me this morning. Get me on a high with Jesus. Don't look at me like that. You all like that. And if it ain't high enough for y'all, we didn't preach a good sermon. But let me tell you, if you would put something in it and live in it through the week, when you got here, you couldn't sit quiet. You couldn't be quiet. You wouldn't have to say, will you praise the Lord? Did you hear me? Because let me tell you, you're going to react to the Spirit of God. I don't care who you are, what your name is, how you are. You may think you're the most reserved person in the world. But if the holy fire of God yeah. and His Spirit gets on you just right, you're going to do something. Yeah. You're going to react to it some way, somehow. You may cry, but you'll be a boo-hoo if you cry. It won't be a little tear tripling down. It may be going up down your spine. It may shake your legs so you can't hold them still. It may shake you. And don't say Never. I've seen, I've heard them say, I wouldn't get up, shake like that and shout. And the next time God would take them and shake them harder and lay them out. You know what I'm asking God? Unravel them, Lord. Woo! Unravel them, Lord. You, if you don't know what unraveling is, whatever it takes, God. I can see them old flower sacks. They had flour in them that my granny and mother used to buy. You had, they had strings and they used that, that bag, wash it and use it for diapers, for different things. In the kitchen. But they had to get that raveling because it was sewed. And I've asked God, unravel each and never one of them, God. Unravel them that you can let what's in them out and you can get something in them. And let me tell you, when you pray that and you believe what you pray, that person, God's going to get them sincere with him and on fire him with him, one way or the other. And sometimes it takes some devastation in their lives for them to even realize how much they need God. You say, I don't like that part of it. Well, you think I do? I don't like that part of you, but I'd rather know you had some devastation in your life than to die, be fooling yourself, and bust tail open. That's the reason I tell you, sinners sometimes are better off than people that come to church because they know if they don't get right, they're going to bust tail open. And the on fire Christian knows where they're headed to. And that lukewarmness that Jesus talked about in Revelation, they just continued as they can be, laid back. Fooling their self every day, living like the world does, talking like the world does, lying like the world, not doing what they told God they would do. Mm. Yesterday, if you're not, that I tell this for my glory, because I, I didn't have nothing to do with it, except I was just a mouthpiece God used. To God be the glory. But a man came up to me, he said, do you remember me, Pastor Gene? I said, well, I believe you've been in my church before, but there's no way I could remember. I, through the years, I see so many faces. He said, when I was a young, he wasn't no old one now, but he, he said, when I was a much younger man than I am today, I came to your church, and you pulled me out, and the Lord said through your mouth, you said, the Lord said, tell you, Many waters will you cross. 
and many tents and buildings will you go under to hear the gospel of the Lord. He said, I just wanted to tell you today, everything God said through your mouth way back then has come to pass. I have traveled over many waters. I have preached in many tents. I have preached in many like little huts. I have cared the gospel. So let me tell you something. When all you and I love you for this, when you all go into that realm where you believe in God for Pastor Gene's going to go to Haiti or Africa, I've already been sure. Yes. And you know how I've already been? When God put that seed in that so he sent them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying that for y'all to look at me, but I'm telling you, we see just little the little slide of what God says. We don't get the big picture. Amen. 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 He said, we may be uh, persecuted, but we're not abandoned. Struck down, but we're not destroyed. We are always caring about in our bodies the death of Christ so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our bodies. For we who are alive, amen, are always being given over to death. If you are alive in Christ Jesus, like I said, you are going to go through things. It's as though the enemy wants to kill that kind of a spirit. He don't want you to be alive in Christ. If you are alive and on fire, you can do damage to the devil's kingdom. And the devil knows that. Huh? And he's coming to take that every day out of you. But that's your job to keep that fire burning to do what God's called you to do. Amen. Amen. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus Christ's sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal bodies. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at, wor at work in you. Mm -hmm. It is written, I believed, past tense. I believed, therefore I have spoken. Have you ever looked at your child when they're little and being disobedient and you would say, okay, you better be, you know what you're going to get, you better behave. Because, and they knew when you spoke, you carried out what you said. You didn't tell them to know two or three times that they better do it. Huh? But God is saying, hey, we believe and we really believe down in here. We're not as scared to speak out. We're speaking for the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are God's mouthpiece. His hands in this world. His light in this world. Every day, Jesus is moving. And you know what? Most of the time, he's moving through human beings. Amen. Amen. And if you don't pray a prayer, the only prayer that can't be answered is a prayer you never do pray. Amen. I believed, and therefore I've spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe, therefore we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is our, for our, your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. God gets glory when you witness. God gets glory when you shine for him. He gets glory when you help somebody along the road. He got glory out of that yesterday to see his children working so hard together and to see them showing love to those other people. You would not believe the people that come up and told me, oh, thank you, thank you, Pastor Gene. Thank you, Pastor Adam. And all these sweet people, never have we ever been treated this good. This, we just, you just don't think about this ever happening. And I was thinking, my goodness. I said, honey, that ain't nothing. That We did just what we were supposed to do in the Lord. Amen. You know, but that's true. If people don't ever see that. And I'm going to tell you what really astounded a lot of them. They couldn't grab a hole that we love one another, that we really love one another, no matter if our face was white 
or chocolate meat like a little girl told me one time. She run up and hugged me. She, or they leave it lying in. She said, Patrick Jean, Patrick Jean was crying. I said, what, baby? And I hugged her. She said, I don't want a motric lead. I said, why, baby? She said, I love you so much. And she threw her little arms around my waist. She said, I don't care if you... Somebody had said it in front of her, you can bet. I don't care if you got a white face like milk. <laughs> Yeah, just that way. I, my face like chocolate milk. You love me, she said. I said, I do, darling. I do love you. You see, it doesn't matter. We love from in here. But some of those folks have never seen that before. That was good for them to see. Huh? That was good for them to see. So when we obey the Lord, try to summon this up. We will have the spirit of faith, and we will be able to speak things into existence. Amen? Yes, we will. And it will cause people, it says, we will reach more and more people and may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. We don't quit. Though outwardly, we are wasting away. And yet, inwardly, we're being renewed every day. For our light and momentarily troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory. Amen? Amen. That far outweighs them all. So, this is what you do when you're in the struggle, when you're in the heat, when you're in the fire, when everything's... There ain't no let up. This is what you do. Real easy remedy. Somebody said, what? Rub some cream on you? Nah. <laughs> that, do that too if it hurts bad enough. But no, I'm about to tell you. It says, so fix your eyes on what is seen. It says, we fix our eyes not on what's seen. You see? You want this one? Order your copy of this message from Pastor Gene Givens. Visit our website at www.pathwaytolife.net or give us a call at 334-262-4569. Please give us the title of the sermon when ordering. Thank you for watching Pathway to Life. If you're in the Montgomery Metro or River Region area, we invite you to join us at Bethel Pathway Church. Our service times are Sundays at 11 o'clock a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. Visit our website at www.pathwaytolife.net. Come, you will be blessed.